Welcome to our fourth lesson in our series on Increase My Faith. And I hope that you've uh, learned a lot, as I have in our thir first three lessons. And uh, tonight, or today's lesson, is no different. Uh, we're just uh, going along in the progression of studying how that we might increase our faith and how our faith may be increased. A key to one's increasing faith is to, as we often call it, walk in the Spirit. And that means that we are dying daily to self and we are decreasing while God is increasing in the control of our lives. We yield completely to the Holy Spirit. And that allows him to have control of our lives. And in so doing, our faith increases because God has control of our lives. Um, hallelujah. That we can do that as believers. That's through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. In Colossians, the second chapter in the seventh verse, the Bible says, Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a big part of our growing and increasing faith. Uh, we need to be thankful for what God has done for us and what he is doing for us. We are a blessed people to be children of God. We must learn to step out in faith based on our trust in God. And that is the way our faith increases, by trusting more in God. Let's look at a few challenges that we face as believers when we want to step out in faith in serving God and being obedient to Him. <clears throat> the first thing that we need to realize is that we will be moving out of our comfort zone. It will mean often that we're doing something we haven't done before. It might be with different people than we've been around before. Or it might be a different role we have with different people. And so, uh, but it takes it, it takes faith because it can be uh, a kind of a, a scary thing to step out into the unknown, into a place that's outside of our comfort zone. But we do that, and when we do, we are building, increasing our faith. Who goes with us when we do that? The Holy Spirit, if we are yielded to Him. Another thing is we can't always be safe in the actions we take and in the words we say. Being obedient to God and doing what he's called us to do sometimes means from our human perspective that we're taking chances. We take a chance with faith in God. Why do we do those things? It's not, it's not just what we do, it's why we do it. And why we do it is to carry out God's will for our lives. And when we are carrying out his will for our lives, it means we are stepping out of our comfort zone. And it means that we are taking a chance, a risk, because we may or may not be accepted. But what is overriding above all those things in importance is doing the will of God. As believers, we will face temptations. Remember Jesus? He was tempted. He never yielded to temptation. We do. We sin. But we are to be able to, to resist temptations, and we can't escape it. He never allows any temptation to sin to come before us 
that he doesn't provide for us as believers, as his children, a way of escape. God will always provide a way out so that if we look for it or if we have faith in him, we will overcome the temptation. In 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and the 13th verse, Paul, in writing to the Christians at Corinth, said the following, There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. There is nothing in this world that's bigger and stronger than the one who is in us. He that in us. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Also, when we have trials and temptations, and even if we yield and are sinful in doing it, God uses those trials to help us build and increase our faith and to make us be stronger as believers, stronger in our resemblance of Jesus Christ, who is perfect. In 1 Peter, the first chapter and the seventh verse, the Bible says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, which perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. What a great day it will be when Jesus comes back. We could refer to it as his second coming. But when he comes and we're reunited with him in the air, what a great thing that's going to be when we are together with him and we are rejoicing in him and we're praising God for that relationship that we have. Yet faith comes from listening, hearing the message of good, of good news, the gospel. The good news is from Jesus Christ, and it is of Jesus Christ. In Romans, the 10th chapter and the 17th verse, the Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And that's been a, a repeated in this lesson, or in these lessons, or in this study. There's a reference in the Bible to a measure of faith. Think about the measure of faith that God has given each of us. What kind of measure of faith, what is he referring to? It's the faith to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We don't come up with that. God provides that. When the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins, draws us to Jesus, the faith that we need to trust Jesus as our Lord and Savior is a gift from God. He's given us the measure of faith that is required to accept Jesus as being the only begotten Son of God and believing on Him as our Lord and Savior. A measure of faith. How much? The amount that we need. 